Hello. Welcome to Hever Castle. I'm so glad you have come to visit me today. Please take a seat. Oh, thank you. I am happy you like it. Well, my maids have been trying to get me to dress a little more fashionable, as you might say. When I came to England all those years ago, while I could not really speak English, I could only read and write a little German, but I think I have really, really gotten used to this country. England is wonderful, and I still like to dress in my German fashions, but slowly I'm learning more and more how to dress and act like an English woman. I do not know if I will ever wear the French hood, but that is okay. I'm very happy here, and I'm so happy you have come to visit. Shall we play a game? Oh, well, I have some cards here, if you like. Oh, you don't know how. <laughs> do not worry, I did not know how to play cards either. At least not English game of cards when I first arrived. I was very lucky that Duke Brandon, yes, Charles Brandon, he came uh, to Cleves those years ago, and he taught me on our journey how to play cards. I'm so grateful for him. He was very kind to me, as was the king, of course. It is true we are no longer married, but I'm quite content. As you can see, Hever Castle is very beautiful, and it was so generous of the king to offer the castle. We are still very good friends. In fact, I just spent a Yule with him at court, and his new wife, the beautiful Kitty Howard. <laughs> oh, little Kitty. She has so much energy, so young and beautiful. You know, she was actually my lady when I was married to the king and once queen. And yes, I did like being queen of England a little bit. I'm much happier now being known as the king's beloved sister. Some people think that is not true and I am envious of little Kitty Howard, but truly I'm happy for her. She's so sweet very generous, like her husband, the king, and they both have been very kind to me. No, I'm much, much happier here, living as the king's friend and beloved sister in Hever Castle. And I get many guests. I do sometimes come to court, but I usually stay here and write. Oh yes, I've learned how to write in English now. And I like to sew and play games. The Lady Mary and the Lady Elizabeth visit me quite often. Oh, they are so sweet. Mary is very serious, but so smart, so clever. And Lady Elizabeth, she is not so serious. She's quite mischievous, but also so clever. She can read, write, sing, and dance. They both are true princesses. And of course, little baby Edward. Oh, he's such a charmer. What a wonderful boy. But in any case, you came to visit me, and I'm so happy you're here. And there's no need to worry about not knowing how to play cards. I'm happy to teach you. Let us play the first game I ever learned. It's called Primero, and I believe it came from Spain, though some say it came from Rome. I only know what Charles Brandon told me, as he is the one that taught me this game. Now, it's fairly simple. We start with a deck of cards, of course. You want a deck of cards with 4D cards. In this game, it's best played with four to six people. 
but just one and two is fine. And there's no need to, for us to gamble or bet right away, but usually this is a betting game. And I do have some coins here in case we decide to bet. <laughs> so let me go over the rules a little bit with you. We begin the game, or the way I learned it, by putting eight cards on the table. And of course you can shuffle the cards. I will do that now. Now, what you want out of the game is to have the highest hand in order to win. And that is not so easy to do because a lot of it is chance. However, if you want to win, a lot of it is this thing, yeah, how do I say, bluffing. Charles Brandon taught me about that. Bluffing is a little bit like lying, but not quite so bad. Nothing you would need to confess later. So, we put down the cards. One, two, three, four, five. Seven and eight. Now there are different um, hands that you can play. I will tell you the best and highest hand, and I will go down and explain the lowest, which is still good, but the least desired of all the combinations. The highest hand you can have is called a chorus, and that is four of the same kind the same kind of card. So, um, for example, uh, you would have four of the number sixes, or four kings, or queens, um, because there are different cards, of course, some are numbers, some are kings, or queens, or jacks, uh, now, the kings and queens, of course, are higher than the number cards. So that is important, too, when we draw and see what each other has. Now, the next best um, suit that you can have, that is called a fluxus, and it is four of the same suit. Now, the suit is... Um, sort of the symbol that's on the card. So there is clovers or clubs, um, or my favorite is hearts. <laughs> when Charles Brandon first showed me this game, I was very surprised to see hearts, that the English play with hearts. I thought it was very clever and funny. Uh, the king did not think that so much. I would try to play cards with him um, to distract him. You see, the king has a bit of an ulcer on his leg. Oh, it's very painful for him. It makes him very cross. Oh, in the stench. Anyway, I am getting distracted. Sometimes I miss the gossip and um, speaking of these things at court. Now, the next card, uh, or hand, is the Supremus, and that is three of a kind, so three of the same cards. Again, um, this can be sixes, or it can be queens, uh, and of course, if we both have that, whichever card is higher wins for that mm, round, that hand. The next hand is a Primero, just like the name of the game, and that is one of each suit. So one heart, um, one clover, uh, one club, one spade, one diamond. I must be getting some of them mixed up. I am really not an expert at cards. It's just something I do for fun here at the castle. And the very last card or hand. It's the lowest of the values, but it's still better than nothing. That is a numerous, and that is two or three of the same suit. 
Um, and once again, the higher the number, the better the hand is. There are different ways to play, but I like the eight cards here. And we take turns drawing the cards. Yes, and then you draw one. Good. And then I might draw one. And we can have, um, sometimes we want to start with four cards, because of course you need four cards. Um, in fact, I think we start with four cards and then there's eight cards. You can draw a card when it is your turn, or you can put a card back. And then you can draw a different card when it's your turn. Now, if you look at your cards and you think, oh, I have a very good hand and uh, you want to um, play your cards, you just do this. You knock on the table, a little tap, and when you tap, you say the words vado, which um, I was told means go, but I don't know in what language. Um, so you knock on the table and say vado. And that means you're ready to show your cards. <laughs> now, you cannot, when you say bado, you cannot change your card. You cannot draw a card when you say bado. Um, but if you draw a card, you cannot say that. It, it goes both ways. So when it's your turn, if you think you have good cards, you can say bado. If you're not ready yet and then you have the card and it's what you not you cannot knock on the table if you draw a card you have to wait until you go around and it's your turn again it's a little tricky the rules but um, it kind of makes sense and as you go around you can of course place some coins, some bets, and this is where the um, bluffing comes into play because the more you bluff or pretend your cards are good, the more money goes in the pile. If your cards are not good, it can be a problem if everyone stays in, but sometimes people will give up, put their cards down, and you get to keep the money very exciting. And when everyone taps and is ready to show their cards, that is called the showdown. Everyone puts their cards up and the winner takes off. <laughs> it is fun, right? That is just one of the games, but it's my favorite because it was the first one I learned when I came to court. I'll shuffle the cards if you want to play around. I think we will have a lot of fun during your visit. We can practice some cards after dinner and perhaps then uh, we will do a little bit of betting. If we're lucky, um, the Lady Mary or the Lady Elizabeth may come to visit. The Lady Mary does not play cards. Um, she prefers to stay in the chapel and pray, which I think is very nice. Um, but the Lady Elizabeth loves to play cards, so perhaps she will join us during your stay. Yes? Oh, very good. It seems dinner is ready, so let's move to the dining hall, and we can come back later to play.